Welcome to Dr. Piercy's Design Diagrams for a Book Database Example. In this video, we'll think before programming our MVC-based Java application. We'll review some helpful diagramming tools to help us think about our application, and we'll understand how our database example program will work. of a typical database connected web application. As we've seen many times, the client initiates something by sending an HTTP request to the web server. With Java web applications, the servlet will handle the request and figure out what resources are needed. If it's connected to a database, it might use some Java classes to make that connection and get some data from the database. When it is ready to create the response, execution will be passed to the JSP to create the view that will be sent as the response. With our application, we're working with Java on the web application side. Java incorporates connection to database using the JDBC, the Java Database Connectivity. This is a section of the JCL which has the Java classes that help you connect to a database. With our example, we're going to use MySQL on the database side. So specifically, we need to be able to connect JDBC-based application with the MySQL application. To do this, we're going to need additional components to actually make this connection. The first thing we're going to need to do is add our driver to the project. A driver is a piece of middleware which will help connect two various technologies. In this case, we're going to get a specific driver that will connect JDBC to MySQL. Now with each use case that we want to make a connection, we will then have to create a connection object. This is one of the Java objects that's available because of JDBC. In this diagram, it's illustrated using the orange box, which you can think of as a tunnel or a connection between our application and the database server. The next thing we'll do is create a prepared statement object. A prepared statement object is something that allows us to send commands to the database server. So with the prepared statement, we'll send a command, and then we're going to receive one of two possible results. If the SQL command that we send to the database using the prepared statement is a read, we'll receive back to our application a result set object. You can think of this as an in-memory database table that matches the results of our read query. If it is a create, update, or delete query that's sent to the database using the prepared statement, then we'll receive an int. The int represents the number of records that are affected by our update to the database. And the fourth thing, we'll have to use some Java classes to process our result set or our int in order to create the view. For our example, we're going to use a simple database that represents a sci-fi library. In my SQL Workbench, I'm viewing that database. It includes just one table, the one shown here, which has the field's book ID, which is a primary key, a title, which is stored as a string, author, which is also a string, and pages, which is stored as an int. We're going to create a simple database application that will be able to read and display this table, will allow us to add records to the table, will let us update a particular record, then let us delete any record that we prefer. Let's look at our example in action. Here's the first page, just a simple entry page to get us started. When we click on the link, we see a list of all the data that's in the books table of the database. So we have implemented a read on the database. Let's see what happens if we try to add a book. A new page with a form is provided. We can add a title. An author. a number of pages. If we add the record, we see that our latest entry has been posted to the database. Let's update that. Let's change the pages. We see the form. We see now it has a book ID. We see the title, C.S. Lewis, been loaded in the form. Let's change the pages to 275. We update the record. We now see in our list, Chronicles of Narnia is 275. If we decide that we want to delete that from the database, we simply click Delete. Now we see that the record has been deleted from our database. The first of several design models that we'll look at for creating our application is the data model. We saw the example of our database, which basically has one table. The book ID is the primary key. It has a title, an author, and a pages field. This class diagram illustrates a book class that we'll create 
correspond to the table in our database. So we'll have a title, an author, and pages as fields. We'll have two overloaded constructors, one that allows us to enter the title, author, and pages, and one that takes no parameters. We'll have getters and setters for each of the instance variables, and we'll have a toString method. We'll use this class as needed when we create, read, update, and delete books to our book database. Let's think about what the viewer will see. We have displayed a sitemap. As we saw in the example, the first page is the table with the data from the database. If they click on Add Entry, they had an Add Entry page. When they filled that out and clicked on Add Entry, they went back to the Browse table. If they clicked on Update, they go to an Update Entry page. They make adjustments as necessary, click Update Entry, and they go back to the table view again. Delete, as far as the user's concerned, simply displays the table again, but with one less record than was there before. Well, how are we going to accomplish that? In our application, we have four main use cases. The first use case is read data. A request comes in to read the database. We're going to use a separate Java class that will query the database to read the data. It will use the book class as necessary. Once the query has been implemented, results will be passed back to the servlet, which will then pass execution on to a JSP to create the view. The JSP will send in response the page that we see here with the table showing the data from the database. Here we see that we're going to need one, two, three, four components to be built to handle this use case. The book class, as we'll see, will be reused. So once we create that once, we will not need to create it again for other use cases. However, the other components will be unique to this one use case. Here we see the use case for adding a book to the database. When add entry is clicked, a request will go to the server, to the add form servlet. This will then pass execution on to the add form view JSP, which will create the response to send the form back to the client. The user will enter data into the form and click on the Add Entry button. This will send a second request to the Add Servlet, which we'll use to process the Add Entry request. Add Servlet will enlist the aid of a helper class to add the query, called Add Query, to add data to the database, which will use the book class as needed. When the Add Servlet is complete, instead of moving on to a view, it will make a read request, meaning it will try to browse the data again from our previous use case. For the Add Data component, we'll need to create one, two, three, four additional components to handle this use case. The third use case will be to update data. Update will be clicked by the client. This will go to the Update Form Servlet. Update Form Servlet will need to enlist the help of a Record Query class in order to get the current data for the book selected. It'll use the book class as needed. When the Record Query class and the servlet are complete, Execution will be passed on to the update form view so that we can see in the response the update entry page is shown here. The user will be able to change data as necessary and click on update entry which will send a new request. This servlet will use the help of an update query to perform the update and change the data in the database. Notice that when the update servlet is finished, instead of sending execution to a JSP to handle a view, we're going to make a read request back to our first use case. So it's as if we're making a new request to a servlet instead of to a JSP. For this use case, we'll need to create one, two, three, four, five additional components. The final use case is to delete the data. The user will click on delete for a particular row. The delete servlet will be called on the request. The delete servlet will call on the delete query to do some work. Once the work is concluded, the delete servlet will then pass execution back to our first use case to read the data and show the updated table. For this use case, we'll need to create only one, two new components. For more information about the concepts that you learned in this video, please visit the references shown here. This video was written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy. The background music is locally sourced by Jason Farnham from the YouTube Audio Collection. This has been a Piercy production.